Hello and welcome to John Roberts Gaming Channel. This is John Roberts and this is Mannix vs. John Roberts Episode 4. Please like, share, subscribe and do all those wonderful things that you do. And then when you're finished liking, sharing and subscribing, please head over to Mannix's channel and do the same for him. So Mannix vs. John Roberts Part 4. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy. Soviet Union round seven. I'm gonna get another tank, five infantry and a tank. Or maybe I should just get seven infantry. Maybe it's time for just straight infantry. I'm looking at this over here. He's got some Japanese force building up back here. actually want to do with this 30 37 40 41 42 43 44 45 okay so he's got 45 that he could attack west russia with what do i have 29 30 31 32 36 38 40 45 46 47 48 i think that's a good defense so the question is what do i want to do here. Uh, he's got more units than I would like to attack, but he's got... I would have to move everything into Russia, right? If I leave these open, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. He'd be able to come in here with. Now that's no good. Hmm. Okay then. Okay, let's see about doing it like this. And we're gonna have to use a tank. I don't want to use a tank, though. Hmm. We'll use a tank, and then the two fighters. It's a shame I didn't want to use the tank for that. It also means I have nothing for West Russia. Hmm. All right, we have to go with it. May the dice gods be with us. Novo was getting my blood pressure up. Whew, my sweet lord. Alright, the two fighters back. Okay, so we need to get another infantry out of here. So this is a shame, because now we have 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, against 45, 10 of mine are fighters, but 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of his are heavy hitters as well, so we'll see. I got four tanks. Okay, so I ran this through the calculator, and it's giving me about a 95% chance, 94, 95% chance. That's not even taking into account that these are losses first. The calculator assumes that you're going to lose these last or second to last. But that's not the case. My anti-aircraft artillery almost always gets lost first. So this is pretty safe. Well, everything blocked. I don't know how long we can hold West Russia with the uh, impending doom coming up behind us. But we'll do as long as we can. The allies are on the way. All right. Let's mobilize. From here, we got one, two, three, four, there'll be five. And let's just put all seven in Russia instead of sitting here counting. I know that I'll have them next round. Okay. 
Let's see what uh, you got, Germany. It is now UK round seven, and the fight's getting a little bitter here. Let's uh, see what Germany did. Eight infantry and four artillery. It's a good buy. Took France. He lost four infantry and one artillery for six infantry, so that's not bad. And in Italy, destroyed four infantry, only lost one, so he, he made out well there. Southern Europe, destroyed two units and lost one unit. Alright, so non-coms, Germany, Guerrilla, Belarusia, Ukraine, Italy, Southern Europe, and French Equatorial Africa. So he's gobbling up Africa. But let's see, let's see here. I may want to use this tank for Africa. Let's see, let's see. This is UK, round seven, so... Okay, so four artilleries and six infantry into Germany, and then two infantry into Karelia. And let's take a count. 30, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 46, so 46, so we got 28, 29, 30, 31, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 44, 47, and we have several units laying around to uh, reinforce that with, including this British unit. Now here's a question, do I want to use this one British unit to take Ukraine? I think I do. All right, let's take a look around. What are we going to purchase? Six, five. We need five, six, seven, eight. Let's look at eight. Okay, six infantry, one artillery, and one tank. Let's take back France. Nice tank there for us. Now let's go for the Ukraine trade. Start making Germany use some units here. Make use of this firepower that's sitting here in some way. And we'll go to trade uh, Burma over here. May the dice gods be with us. Okay, good trades all around. I didn't get Ukraine, so it turns into a can opener, I suppose. Alright, the five infantry back into West Russia. Obviously, the two infantry back into C Zone 8. Let's move this infantry up into Ukraine. Yes, we'll, we'll move you into Ukraine. Another infantry into Persia. Land this fighter back in India. The sub, we're gonna leave here. Just leave the sub there. He's invulnerable at the moment. Let's put them all together. Make it harder for him to get this, I guess, since he isn't interested in attacking them alone. Okay, we're not moving these units. Not moving these units. Not moving these units. Okay. That looks good. Tank in India, along with two infantry. Four infantry and one artillery in UK. Let's see what Japan's got for us. 
USA round seven. Let's go over Japan's turn. Eight infantry, five tanks. Okay, took Archangel, Vologda. Burma, no units lost there. Kazakh, no units lost. And Novosibirsk. Alright, he moved this little fleet over to 59. It's still in range of Western USA, so we'll still keep an eye on that. 61, aircraft carrier to 61. Season 30. Xinjiang. Novosibirsk. One more aircraft, anti aircraft. Three infantry to Anway. Sheshwan. And the boatload over to Yunnan, the two fighters. And pulled out of Alaska. Okay, United States. So this is a bad situation that I kind of put myself in here. And this might be the deciding factor in this game. I'm going to end up losing these five UK fighters. I thought I had one more round that I could keep them here. And I was wrong. I have to pull everything into Moscow or I'm going to lose Moscow. He has 28 attackers that can reach Moscow with Japanese. He's got 45 attackers that can come into West Russia. So I don't have the capability of holding both and I can't move these fighters now. That may very well be the factor that decides this game. But let's do the very best that we can. So let's see here. I got five transports here, so I'm going to take 10. I have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that means next round with these two, I'll need one more. And then if I get one more transport, then I will need three more. Fighter and a bomber. Like make one of you's a artillery. He's got four or five possible attackers. So this is still well defended. That looks good. We'll make sure to get Alaska back. Pull the sub out of there. Okay, let's see here. Send one this way. Grab these. Send the other two transports this way and grab these in Algeria. Of course, we use the battleship and the cruiser and these two fighters. Take an infantry and a tank down here. I think that's the best use of this here. How does this even look? says strong. Feels strong. It might actually be worth it to take one transport and see about getting back Brazil. Okay, well, may the dice gods be with us. So Mannix finally had himself a little bit of luck here for me to miss both bombardments and then him to hit one of my fighters with the aircraft, any aircraft, and then for me to have such weak rolls on top of all that. Okay, let's land these two fighters in Moscow. These three fighters in Moscow. 
one fighter to 15, one fighter to 13. 15 still has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's got four, five. Uh, it's still safe, it's still safe. You can only get one here, so that's still safe. Okay, let's load him up. Land him in Morocco. Uh, no reason to have you there, you're not really doing anything there. Okay, we're not moving that unit or that unit. We're not moving these units. Not moving any of yous. Looks good. Bomber and fighter out of Eastern. Oh, and I forgot to move these transports because they weren't highlighted because there was transports that were already moved there. Forgot to move the transports, so... Very unfortunate. But at least I held this one transport back. We still have two transports. Okay, let's send it over to Soviet Union. Soviet Union round eight. Let's see, we got 20 IPCs. Six infantry. Sounds good, I like it. One infantry there, and we gotta take Archangel. Okay, may the dice gods be with us. Everything and to Moscow. Sorry, British fighters. Another one of my blunders. But we learn from our mistakes. We learn from our mistakes. And this is how we will become better players. Should have moved everything back around. And in my double and triple check, I should have noticed that there was two transports here among the transports that were already moved. That is one thing that can be a little confusing, however, though. The transports I moved were in the same pile. If you see two piles of transports, that might be an indicator. I know I'm supposed to remember what I've moved and haven't moved, but there's also supposed to be a visual representation of that, and that's kind of what slipped me up here, and it was a really bad time for it. It was a really bad time for it, because instead of getting another eight units here next round, I only get four units, and this is at a time where the defense of Moscow is starting to become uh, questionable. Especially since I don't have these five fighters anymore. So. And this little Italy thing is the universe paying me back for uh, getting lucky on some of these early game trades. So we'll start the turtle. Let's see it, Germany. UK round 8. Let's review Germany's turn. He purchased 13 infantry. So Germany is in a defensive mode, I would assume, from this. Though the US machine moving, but not as quickly as I would like. I'm still upset with myself over these two transports I left here. Okay, he captured Northwest Europe via tank blitz. He left France probably because he had very good luck. Uh, he destroyed seven infantry while only losing one infantry, and then he retreated. So that really stinks for us. That's not just poor luck, that's pretty bad luck. What did he go in there with? Two artillery, five infantry, and four fighters on seven infantry and an artillery. So 11 on eight. I'm sure it was pretty favorable for him, but uh, he should have lost a few more units. He should have ended up here with a, a medium-sized stack for me to take out. It's just a very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Okay, Anglo-Egypt he took. Looks like he brought a bomber to help support that, so now his bomber's down here. 
just to have to watch out. We can't bring any transports over here now that are undefended. Ukraine, he lost an infantry there. And West Russia, again, he only lost one infantry. He probably should have lost four, three, maybe four. He lost one. That was very lucky for him. Uh, this one doesn't make all that much of a difference. So what was I going to get? One or two more infantry? It's just still, you know, it's kind of like a little salt. Okay. So Italy, stack it up. I will not be able to take Italy. It would be nice if I could. If I could figure out a way. Does not look like it. Logistically, I should probably have one or two more units here right now. And of course, I should have a couple more fighters. You know, this is why not taking it was such a stroke of bad luck for us as well. If you remember in last round, we failed to take this in what was a 90% chance for us to take it. That also was not good and very unfortunate. So a combination of a decent sized blunder not a colossus sized blunder, but a decent sized blunder, losing five fighters, and then having some pretty bad luck has uh, shifted the tide of this game. I'm pretty sure I had uh, a slight advantage, and now it seems that Maddox has a bit of an advantage. I would say a little bit more than a slight advantage. But this game is not unwinnable. Let's see here. And he does have a lead here. 41 points. Um, he's at 86, and I'm at 82, so he's out producing me too. So a couple of things would need to change within the next round or two if I am going to win this. Because so I was talking to Manix, he seems to be in the opinion that he has a slight advantage. Maybe he just doesn't want to speak too soon, but he has he has better than a slight advantage. We'll, we'll call it that. Better than a slight advantage. Okay, let's continue with the review. Poland, one fighter to Germany, 10 infantry to Germany, and 3 infantry to Italy. Okay. Now here's a question. Maybe I want to start taking some uh, UK units and send them to Karelia. Maybe I want to take Karelia lightly and take Baltic States lightly, or do I want to put everything in Karelia? Hmm, maybe I just want to put everything in Karelia. Hmm. Because I don't think I'm threatening Germany anytime soon. Probably going to put these in Southern Europe. We have three transports here. We have six transports here. Three here. That's nine. Ten. Eleven. So we should be able to leave four transports here. So we could take all eight and put them in Southern Europe. He has four, five, six aircraft still. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Counting the battleship once. Eight if you count it twice. Just have to make sure everything remains defended. He can go one, two, three, four, four, five, six. Theoretically, he can get this bomber to 13, but he can't get there anywhere else, can he? No, he cannot, so this is still safe. And then this space, C-Zone 5, he can only get to 5 there. What does he have going on with Japanese aircraft? He could start getting Japanese aircraft here, but not if I take it. He can get Japanese aircraft here. And then down in India. So he's got four transports. So he could take eight of these. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. If we're counting the uh, bombardments. 16, 17, 18, 19 if we don't take Burma. We definitely have to take Burma. Now we have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So I think I want to put about seven infantry here in Burma. Hopefully we only lose one or none of them. I want to put them there because I want to see how he would react to that. Maybe I should only put five. I mean, if I put seven here, let's assume we have six, he's going to demolish that with all of this. And then he may be able to quickly... But I would want him to do that, wouldn't I? I would want him to stack this up and threaten India. And then I can abandon India. I would trade Calcutta for Moscow any day. Any day. And also, I don't think he would fall for that. So yeah, let's put, let's put units out here. Make sure we still have 
a very strong defense here. Okay, so that being said, I want another tank, another infantry, and do I want another fighter? What happens if I get another fighter that leaves 12? That means only four up here. Ew, no, I don't want that. What if no tank? That's five. I think I can live with that for a turn. Maybe we could take the AA gun with us or something. In fact, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, well, he doesn't really have any aircraft here. Any aircraft would be better here. Maybe he can end up in France next round or something. Okay. So combat. So let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So then that means there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. No, I think I can only afford to put four in here. I'm not doing anything with this. I'm just simply gonna take these infantry and put them into Moscow for as long as I can get that done. Might as well grab the extra two. He's gonna get this back anyway. Okay. Everything we can into Karelia. I honestly think this is my best move right now with the British. The best thing I can do to disrupt... Bring the cruisers in just so I don't forget. Help me not forget. Don't forget. No forgetting. May the dice not be with us. We got a few more units in here. Hopefully that uh, causes him to have to use more of these units here rather than sending them up here. All right, every unit counts. Make sure we send the fleet to C Zone 5. That would be a disaster if we forgot that. Replace this unit in Persia. And let's do a double and triple check. Not moving these units. The sub stays. That's everybody. Alright, the fighter out of India. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but it's rare that I actually produce fighters out of India. I usually produce them out of the UK. I find it more efficient to produce them out of UK and fly them elsewhere. Uh, this is a special case. Okay. Well, let's see a Japan. We are now at USA round 8. We need to go over Japan's turn. 7 infantry, 6 tanks. Hefty, hefty. Uh, took Archangel. Lost an infantry. Took Caucasus. No losses. Persia failed to take the territory. Lost an infantry. And Burma. No units lost. Destroyed three infantry. Didn't lose a unit. That's good for him. I think the luck is definitely uh, turned a bit. Okay, so Xinjiang, he's got all this in there. Sent four fighters to West Russia. Four infantry to Szechuan. Uh, unloaded his units in Yunnan. Put an aircraft carrier in 47. Hmm. I guess it gives these fighters range to 44. That's that's the only purpose I could see for this. Uh, infantry to Vologda. Two infantry to Avenki. An infantry to Caucasus. Infantry to Kazakh, the cruiser down to C Zone 28. And put the battleship in 61. Okay, two tanks in Kwangtung, three in Manchuria. 
and the rest of the units in Japan. United States, 52. Six, I need six land units. I'm gonna get a transport and a destroyer. Go with another fighter. Let's upgrade a couple of these. Seven. We'll just save the seven. Let's save that for now. So combat moves. I was looking at this. He has seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I would need like twenty units to take this. I have eight, nine, ten. So that's not happening, but what I can do... Is put eight units in Southern Europe. Okay. So that's it for United States combat moves, unfortunately. That's not really good. Take a fighter. We still have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's got four, five, six. Get these Brazilian guys here. Land them in Morocco. Use this transport. Land in Morocco as well. Make sure to bring the five infantry, the five transports back. Put a fighter there, in C-Zone 13. Bring this infantry back down. Might as well bring these infantry over now. Having them here with these fighters here, we might be able to do uh, some can openers or something. Okay, that looks good. So, a fighter, destroyer in 56 and a transport in 56. Breaking the one ocean rule. The rest out of the east. Okay. Let's send it over to Soviet Union. That will do it for this video. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and do all those wonderful things you do. And please remember to join us for episode 5 of Mannix vs. John Roberts. And as always, thank you for watching.